Hi, I'm Nate Trail from Library of Congress, and I'm the lead developer for Bibframe. Um, uh, our colleague, our boss, Sally McCallum, is not able to be here today, so it'll just be Ray and I. Ray will talk a little bit about ontologies, and I'll be talking about the pilot. We've had the pilot uh, number two going on for a number of months so far, so this is just a preliminary overview of what we're finding and what we're doing. Uh, in order to get things started, we had to build a Bibframe database so that our catalogers could uh, catalog against it. And that consisted of um, all of the name titles and title authority records in our um, LC NAF at uh, id.loc.gov as converted to Bibframe, plus a complete dump of our ILS records, um, bibliographic records converted to uh, the new Bibframe 2 vocabulary, and then also um, native Bibframe from our Bibframe editor as the catalogers um, code into it. Um, the main focus of the pilot is really about <laughs> data entry and conversion of the data, and it's really not enough about what do you do on the back end or on the uh, web side of it, which I think is something that we need to pivot and move toward now that we've sort of built a, a database for this. Um, the database that we have is sort of living. It has daily feeds from both the ILS and from the name authority records. And when the catalogers add new records, those are merged in with the database and um, the records that they also have to key into the ILS um, to maintain uh, the ILS, the real ILS going forward, are uh, kept separate from that. So between Bibframe 1 and Bibframe 2, we've changed a lot of things. The original vocabulary um, we've uh, overhauled, and so now we have Bibframe 2 as a um, vocabulary. And we also realized that our infrastructure was inadequate for the amount of linking that was going to happen between our own data and others, as well as internally. So we have uh, replaced all of the servers that were involved in id.loc.gov, and we have um, added additional machines to, to make it much more robust. Um, our triple store was four store, which is an open source product, and it's uh, no longer being supported, so we've switched that out. And just recently, we moved to um, allow HTTPS for all of our links. We've also changed all the software. Most of the code base that we had originally was in XQuery, um, but now for our conversion in the uh, Bibframe 2 vocabulary, we're using XSL. And one of the reasons for that was so that we could um, embed the uh, resulting tools in Metaproxy and Yaz, so they're instantly available when we make code changes to any library that updates their Metaproxy and Yaz tools. The comparison service online is now updated for Bibframe 2, and we've added an authority conversion as well, so you can see what a name title authority looks like as a Bibframe work. And um, when we ingest everything into the database, we do a merge for a bibliographic record to see if it can match to an existing work, and all the merge programs had to be updated for the new vocabulary as well. The Bibframe catalog that we created had to have a front end, so we've got a new search and display interface for that. And we're just starting to use Sparkle to augment the display, and um, not for a whole lot of other stuff, but just a little bit of extra um, display stuff. The editor itself was written for Bibframe 1, so we've modified that to uh, handle Bibframe 2, and the profiles that we have are also now updated for the new vocabulary. Um, to a little comparison between ID and Bibframe as far as triples, ID has about 10 and a half million records that are names and subjects and other smaller vocabularies. It, represent, it has about 300 million unique triples, um, 21 million subjects, only 768 predicates, which is interesting when you look at down below how many predicates there are for the Bibframe database. I have not really delved into that to see why exactly there might be 14,000 unique predicates, but we'll see. <laughs> um, the number of triples in the Bibframe database, there's 65 million uh, descriptions, 
and that uh, ends up being four billion triples because when you do a bib frame conversion, it's very wordy in order to allow us to do this mer merging and matching. And I, at some point soon, I'm gonna be uh, deleting the things that were necessary for ingest, but not necessarily for the ongoing uh, bib frame data. So when we merged, we started with the base file of name titles. There's about 1.2 million of those. Um, and 19 million bibliographic descriptions were added to that. And um, after the merge, uh, about 1.2 million works had something merged onto them, um, not just their own records, not the, just their own instance necess necessarily, excuse me. Um, but only 530 million instances were merged onto one of the name authority works. Um, so the other 700,000 or so merged onto bibs that came before them. And I'll show you an example of one of those. So uh, this is a title, Runaway Mittens, and um, there are two different editions, apparently, and if you look on the right-hand side, the one that's in bold is this particular instance, and the sibling right below that with the hyperlink, that's the uh, instance that was merged onto the same work, so it's available um, for viewing as well. Uh, just a little bit of the Sparkle that we started to use for that instance. You don't necessarily know on an instance what its parent's title is or what other siblings are available, what other instances belong to the same work. So we just did a simple query that says, okay, if you have an instance of some work, go find that work and get its uh, bib frame title and bring it back. And you can also say, well, go find all of the things that are instances of that same object and get their titles. And so we have that. Some of the issues that we've encountered, um, we're using RDFXML for uh, um, the conversion from the, for the bib records, but the bib frame editor is a JSON editor. And so um, before we start doing ingest, we have to bring everything to the same structure so that we can do ingest the same way. There's a huge number of triples involved and we're still trying to figure out how to limit that and index only the stuff that is necessary. When we do our merges, um, there's a lot of candidates for maybe you shouldn't merge this. For example, a um, photograph doesn't necessarily have a title, so it says untitled, but not all untitled work should be merged together. <laughs> so we, we actively suppress some things from being merged. And the uh, conversion from Mark is still a moving target. So every time the conversion spec changes and index data makes an update, we have to figure out how does that update flow into the database. We can easily change the conversion on the way in, but all the prior records, we have to figure out, can we um, update those on the fly in some way or do we need to reload everything? So some of the work that we can um, still look forward to is trying to figure out how to expose the bib frame catalog. Right now it's behind the firewall and we're still trying to figure out what it looks like and, and how, to, how to come to grips with it for ourselves. But we might do some kind of a bulk download. Um, I would really like to see something more, uh, less cataloging focused and more web focused. So maybe a new RDF navigation interface, but um, we have not got a plan for that yet. We're still uh, definitely looking at the data that's coming in. And um, we also would like to ingest new SIP records and Onyx records and convert those to bib frame. The editor has a lot of issues and I'm sort of tempted to just change it to a simple HTML form and convert to bib frame on the back end. Um, we're always looking for new services at ID, so we need your input for what else you wanna see from um, the systems that we have. And soon we'll have a uh, spec for holdings, so we'll start ingesting items as well. And these are some links to the converters and documentation, stuff like that. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Ray Denenberg. I'm also with the Library of Congress. <clears throat> I'm gonna talk a little bit about the, the ontology, the BitFrame ontology 
Um, and this is pretty much a condensed version of, of what I talked about yesterday uh, in a two-hour session for those of you who were there. Um, and those of you who weren't there um, and who are interested in some of the uh, points that I uh, talk about, um, my understanding is that the presentation yesterday will also be on the um, among the conference proceedings, and so you can you can you can see a number uh, more further examples of what I give uh, today. So I start by saying that the um, the development of the bib frame ontology was uh, driven by a number of principles, um, and two of which were um, simplicity and extensibility. And by that I mean that um, when a, a particular feature was um, suggested to us, and keep in mind that BibFrame is intended to be a core bibliographic ontology. So when a particular feature was suggested to us, we evaluate, uh, in deciding whether to support it or not, we usually would evaluate whether it was a core bibliographic function, but if we decided not to support it, then we would go um, to whatever lengths necessary to try to ensure that it would be extensible and we encouraged extension on, and we, we encouraged and encourage extension ontologies where the people developing those have much more expertise for developing ontologies for special collections and things like that to develop extensions. Um, so I mentioned a few of these. Um, I just want to make sure this comes out. This can be seen because this one's in black. Everybody can see this, right? Um, so there's um, Art Objects uh, that's being led by Columbia University. Uh, Harvard is leading the effort for, uh, for extensions in, in both uh, maps and um, moving images. Perform, there's a Perform Music group um, that's being led by Stanford. That's the one that I have worked probably the closest with, and I think, and I'm not sure of this, but I think it's probably the furthest along among the among the extension ontology, and somebody can correct me on that. Um, Rare materials by Cornell, and then there's Bibliotech O, which is, which is loosely described as a bib frame extension. But um, they're going to be speaking next, so they can, they can characterize that uh, better than I can probably. Um, so um, I, I want to first give a very quick review of the bib frame model, just to, um, just to provide some context for what I'm going to talk about. So the basic Bib frame model uh, begins with a work, and a work can have one or more instances. So, for example, a work, um, uh, Candide, the book, might have a print version published and an electronic version. Those would be two instances, and um, every instance can have one or more items, and those are the copies of the given instance. So, for example, um, and um, we also define work-to-work -work relationships as an important aspect of bib frame. So, for example, the book Candide and the play Candide, these are, these are two distinct works, and they are connected by the property that we've defined BF related to, which is basically a super property for, for, for a number of sub-properties um, sub -properties of BF related to. Um, now I just want to say at this point that the related to property was um, pretty much conceived for, for the purpose of work-to-work -work relationships, although there were some work-to-instance relationships, instance-to-item relationships, but primarily work-to-work -work relationships. Um, but um, the, um, the um, extension groups, primarily the music extension groups, wanted to relate um, works to other sorts of things, not just instances and items. And so in the interest of, of um, extensibility, we dropped all of the domains and ranges on the um, related to property, and I'll talk more about that uh, in a moment or two. Um, and finally, um, the, um, um, in the bib frame model, we have a number of subclasses of work. So for example, a book is a BF work, but it's also a BF text, as BF text is a subclass of BF work. A, a painting would be a, a BF still image, which is a subset of BF work. 
And with that, I want to talk just a bit about the music extension and how we've related to that. So back to the uh, subclasses of work, there are two in particular that are of interest to, um, to music, the BF audio and BF notated music. So let's take, for example, the uh, Mozart clarinet quintet. So that um, you could have a score or you could have a recording of it. And the score would be uh, a BF notated music. Uh, the recording would be a BF audio, and these are, these are two distinct works. Um, um, the, 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 but the music extension adds a, la a layer of, ex a la I've got a few typos in this, and um, I'm going to correct those, and I'll issue a, a, a revised uh, version of this. It's not a later of abstraction, it's a layer of abstraction um, that music adds to the, to the basic model. Um, you won't find this published anywhere, but this is my understanding from reading what they're working on, that they're coming up with a work model, and in that work model, they would actually define an abstract work. So in other words, this particular piece of music, the Mozart clarinet quintet, um, would, be, uh, would have an abstract work, which is actually the, the music as it existed in, in Mozart's head, and then when it was committed to... Um, paper, it would became, become a, a notated, a BF, it would become in the bib frame terms a BF notated music, and that's a work, but the, the actual abstract work would be a layer above that. So this is an, uh, you know, sort of an extension to the bib frame model that the music extension is, is, is developing, and as far as bib frame's concerned, I mean, bib frame doesn't define an abstract work of that type. As far as bib frame is concerned, it's perfectly compatible with the model. It just sort of extends the model. Um, and so they, um, the, and then when they define this um, uh, extended, I mean this layer of, additional layer of abstraction, they defined um, property realized in. So this Mozart clarinet quintet would be realized in a BF notated music. It would also be realized in um, a, a, a BF audio, if it's recorded. Uh, PMO here refers to the uh, performed music ontology. And um, do we have all this here? Okay, so it all, uh, the, the music uh, people um, took a look at the bit frame event model, which I'm going to talk about in just a moment, and said that this isn't, this relationship. Uh, related to isn't good enough. We want to relate works and events. So here you have, um, in this case, an event, a performance of the Mozart clarinet quintet is a BF event, and it, according in, in mu music terms, it's a PMO performance. And then you also have the event to work relation um, has recording. Um, so let me talk about bib frame events for just a moment. Um, how much more time do I have? What? About 20 minutes. Uh-oh. <laughs> okay, so uh, later, late in the game, uh, we added an additional core class, BF event. And um, so let's say there's a concert. The concert is recorded. A book is written about the concert. Well, the concert is an event. It's a BF event. The recording of the concert is a work, and the book written about the concert is a work, and the concert is the subject of the book. So let me just say what I mean by subject of the book, and just uh, so I'll digress for a moment, talk about bib frame subjects. When we, when we express a subject in bib frame, we want to give a type. So you know, for example, um, this subject is a, is a person, and then you give the actual subject. This is a bit of hand-waving. The subject could have a direct object as a, a Mads record or, what, or so forth, but this is a little more uh, human expressible. So let's, you express that this is a person, the person is John Wilkes Booth, as opposed to, say, a work, because it could be BF work, and it could be a work, it could be a book um, about John, John Wilkes Booth. Um, um, it could be a BF geographic, um, as I said, it could be a BF work, or um, what I was point that I was coming to is, is it could be a BF event. This is one of the main reasons for, for describing, <laughs> I'm, I'm getting the uh, choke signal here. Um, 
Um, I will let, um, so uh, just give me another 30 seconds here. Um, we, we uh, the event content and event content of our two properties that were defined uh, for the purpose of, the, for the event model. Um, and uh, we've extended the BF related to so that you could have work to event, um, work to event relations. Um, and the music people created this property, created for, PMO created for, because they didn't think that um, uh, what I, uh, that the, that the, I can't go, can't go back. Um, but um, that they didn't think that the, that the um, related to property was um, specific enough. Anyway, uh, they have defined additional PMO classes, concert performance, and festival. And in addition, they've sort of developed a whole hierarchy of event types. And the rare material uh, folks have created um, um, a custodial event, an event type, and a whole lot of custodial event. Um, types that are a subset of custodial events. I have a lot of material that I want to discuss on bit frame titles. I'm gonna, uh, I, I would suggest go to the, um, uh, the presentation I did yesterday, and there's a, um, a wealth of, of examples uh, uh, on bit frame titles. And um, so I guess that's it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. There's only so much you can. <laughs> There's only so much you can fit into 10 minutes, so um, I think we have to move on to the next speaker and any questions I suggest you take up during the coffee break.